Hi all. So um, this year I really wanted to focus on increasing my production um, to try and drive down my costs um, and I'm also hoping that I will sell more um, this year and I know it's it's kind of what is it September 7th right now so kind of late in the year um, but it's just something I've been working on is scaling up my production and instead of doing four and a half pound batches of soap I wanted to try doing 25 pound batches of soap which is quite a bit different than what I'm used to. Um, this video I recorded is my literal first time doing a 25 pound batch of soap and you are going to see me struggle with figuring out how to do some things, um, struggle with lifting 25 pounds of soap um, at the end when I'm ready to unmold it and cut it. And um, I'm also including throughout the video um, a few snapshots um, of kind of what my behind the scenes looks like. Because um, I figure, you know, I, I watch all of these YouTubers and other soap makers and I always wonder what what their, their space looks like um, because I just find that I have a difficult time having room for everything. I mean, I'm doing this kind of, you know, out of my house. Well, out of my parents' house is where I'm at um, when I'm doing the soap making. Um, and just having the space for all of the, the camera set up and the light set up and, you know, the tripods and, you know, plus all of the equipment that I need for soap making. So um, I do have some photos later on in the video um, of what the space looks like and I will forewarn you it is a hot mess um, it's a shared space with my parents so um, but here you see me weighing out all of my hard oils and butters um, and getting that ready and then here is the lye water um, well the water getting poured in and, and I will mix up the lye um, outside because I actually, this space is um, my parents, what used to be a garage, they closed it in, turned it into an office for a while, then it was a gym, there's the photo, um, and now it's just a giant storage space, and I'm way over in that corner um, with the one little window. So I don't have an exhaust hood, uh, the window, technically opens but you can see there's two windows on the same side of the room so that's not good for ventilation so I actually pour my lye which I'm measuring out now into my water outside um, in the driveway I just set it down in the driveway and do it um, just so I you know I don't fume myself out um, so yes this is a it's a very interesting process it's it's very uh, steep learning curve you know like here me trying to figure out you know the best way to film this you know my tripod is at its max height and i've i've got to try and get this t really tall bucket under the view of the camera you know on top of my scale the bucket is kind of large for my scale so it's hard for me to actually see to display on my scale when i'm weighing stuff um so i struggled with that a little bit and yeah this is just the liquid oils going in here um so yeah there's a photo there of me i have to pull the table out you can see it's one of those folding tables so i have to pull it away from the wall so i can get the lights set up and and get everything the way i need it for filming and as you can imagine trying to do all of that every time i want to make a soap is really it's difficult and it's discouraging um to me just because it takes so much time to like move all the stuff and get everything set up and get it all the way i need it and then I can start making soap, you know, it ends up making me not want to film my soap making process, um, which is counterproductive to, to what I want to achieve with my company. Um, you know, YouTube and videos are very popular and I'm trying to force myself uh, to be more consistent and to do these things. 
on the flip side of that, the video editing, I would rather have to worry about setting up all the camera equipment and everything and film versus editing videos. Like this is like the bane of my existence. Um, and then I'm gonna put a photo in here of of what my video editing area looks like. And this is my, in my home and it's right by the front door. I have an air, the air intake for the AC is, you know, to the left of the window. Um, you know, I'm in the shared space of our home, you know, with my fiance and he has three kids and their ages, you know, five through 16. So trying to do voiceovers and edit my videos, it's a crapshoot as to when I'm going to be able to do it. You know, when am I going to have the time? When am I going to be alone to do it? So I don't have screaming kids running around. Plus I don't, even if I didn't have the kids there, just my fiance being there, it's just kind of weird to me to have someone hearing me like, like what I'm doing right now, talking to no one really. I mean, I guess you could say like, well, that's not how I should view it. I should view it as I'm talking to my YouTube followers, but at this point in time, I don't really have YouTube followers and I know this. And so it's like in my mind that I'm not talking to anybody right now. So it's just kind of awkward for me because I'm, I'm an introvert. This is, this is so outside of my comfort zone. And, um, so yeah, I was just figured I would show you what this whole process looks like for, for me. And I wonder how the process looks like for other people do you know is everyone else doing these kind of things or having these struggles or you know so anyway that's why i put the pictures in there so you can see it and i i can just be real with with how it is like right now i'm trying to hurry up and get this voiceover done before my fiance gets home with you know the 16 year old from school so i have a limited amount of time to like get this voiceover done so You've seen me put all of my oils and butters together. You've seen me pour way out my lye water, um, my water in my lye. Now I'm adding the lye water to the soap batter. I should have, and, and this is, you know, retrospect, because this is me doing all of this for the first time. I should have had a spatula here to pour my lye water onto, um, because there are times when the lye water is glugging out and it's splashing into my soap batter and the lye water is kind of splashing around and that's very dangerous. Um, I mean, I have gloves on, I have goggles on, I've got an apron on, I've got my hat on, um, but this is Florida and the room that I'm in is not super well um, air conditioned. So it's about 80 degrees in here all the time. Um, so I'm not in pants and I am not in long sleeves because it's just too stinking hot. So here I'm mixing all of my ingredients together on the floor because this mixer is so tall. I needed something tall enough to reach the bottom of my bucket and my little immersion blender is not tall enough. Um, my fiance got me this cement mixing paddle, um, which is powder coated and should be fine. But after using it, the lye did find one little place um, that wasn't properly powder coated and created a little rust spot. So I gave it to my fiance to use in his business because he's a mason. Um, and I found a stainless steel food grade stainless steel mixing paddle. Um, it's a little bit shorter, uh, but looks just the same on Amazon. And I'm using that now and it works perfectly. And so I'm using an actual um, drill to, to mix my, my soap batter up just because I, I can't get an immersion blender long enough to get to the bottom of my bucket when everything's in there. Um, that's not going to be, you know, crazy expensive. I'm, I'm trying to scale up, but on a budget. So the mixing paddle and the, you know, the drill that I already own was, was my best, cheapest option. So it was like $30 for the mixing paddle and I already had the drill. Um, so you can see here, I'm using my immersion blender, but I'm not going all the way to the bottom of the, the bucket. I'm trying to use the spatula to, to also help me you know, pull up the um, batter from the bottom. But I didn't think about the fact that I was gonna need to mix in my fragrance oil um and my colorants uh and i had cleaned up the mixing paddle and put it 
to the side, took it off the drill because, you know, it's kind of wheeled, unwieldy and heavy and wasn't going to stand up and was in the way. So I like, took it all apart real quick and set it to the side and then realized, well, crud, I need to mix my fragrance oils and stuff in. So I still had to use the immersion blender um, just a little bit. But also you can see a lot of bubbles in here and this is another reason why I wanted to get away from the immersion blender. I've had this problem with every single immersion blender I've ever bought. And even if I burp them, you know, knock them around, try and get the air out of the um, the shaft and the, the base there, it, it doesn't work. It still puts air bubbles into my soap batter and um, all of them have broken in the same place. Um, they all break where they attach to the actual motorized handle part. Um, and I feel like after they break in that area, like they become loose and they never like clip on real tight, they suck up more air, like air is being sucked down the blender shaft um, and into the soap. It, it's just, it's so, so bad. There's so many bubbles. You can see them right now just all of the bubbles popping um, and no amount of beating my slab mold down or my, you know, soap mold down will get all those bubbles out. So I've always struggled with having air bubbles in my soap. Um, and I've gotten to a point where I don't even bother trying to, to burp the blenders because it doesn't matter. And I've, I've bought Oster. I've bought, you know, the cheaper ones at Walmart, the Hampton Bay. Um, and it's, it doesn't matter what one I've had. They, they've all done the same thing. So here I'm uh, getting all of my, my colors ready and I'm going to stick blend them in because it just helps get the um, micas mixed in a lot easier when you stick blend them. And then also when you're using titanium dioxide, um, the stick blender makes that titanium dioxide mix so much better it comes out your soap comes out a lot whiter when you stick blend it versus trying to just stir it in so i i paused for a second there um because my ac came on while i was trying to do my voiceover here and I was worried about it interfering with the quality of the voiceover because this is actually my second time doing this voiceover. The first time um, after I was all done and I was listening to it, there was like spots where it was like the sound, the playback sound was like high and low, high and low. Like my voice was, you know, really loud and then you could barely hear it. And it was like kind of glitchy and weird sounding. And um, I have a Blue Yeti uh, mic, which is a really nice mic, and I've used it on um, two other videos before, but I'm not like, I'm not super tech savvy. I don't exactly know what I'm doing. So um, I tried to troubleshoot what could possibly the, be the issue. And um, besides the fact that I had the mic on an incorrect setting, because there's a button right on the back of it, like right where your hand would grab where my hand does grab every time I move it. And when you hit that button, it changes the different um, sound settings that it has. So it had changed it to a sound setting that basically picks up sound in bi-directional, two, di two different directions from the front and the back of the um, mic. Um, and behind my mic is my computer screen. And behind that is the air intake for the AC. And so I was concerned that the AC coming on um, was part of the issue and the mic was trying to adjust for that noise. Um, so when the AC just came on, I, I paused the my recording so I could wait for it to go off um, and, and see what happened. Like I, I, I paused the video and the recording. I went back and listened to the little bit of my my voiceover that was still I was still talking when the AC came on and checked it and it happens. It has to be the, the setting on the mic because I also changed the setting to where it's only coming from the front of the um, 
mic where it's only recording sounds from the front of the mic. Um, and the recording sound beautiful, even though the AC was going in the background, you couldn't hear that at all. So it definitely had to do with the, uh, the setting that I had on there, but I'm, I'm, I'm keeping all of this in here because, you know, you should know, you should know how difficult this is, um, doing these videos and these voiceovers and the editing and, you know, even just trying to, you know, maintain your space is just so hard. I mean, here I'm, I'm one of the things I'm doing because I didn't have my, my big mixer set up and I don't want to keep putting so many air bubbles into my soap. I was like, you know, let me just try whisking in my colorant here and, and seeing, you know, if I can get some of those air bubbles out and, you know, there's, there's so many things to struggle with when, when you're doing this. And I've been making soap for, you know, over a decade. Um, and while I've not made a ton of batches of soap in that time period, you know, I have made quite a bit of soap. Um, you would think someone, you know, just in general, you think someone who's done something for, you know, a decade, they should know all the ins and outs of it. But, you know, I don't. And that comes with uh, practice and ex like number of batches. Like the more you do and the more you do consistently, the better you will get at it. You know, that's true with anything. But just because you've been doing something for 10 years, if you've only done it a few times over that, that time span doesn't, doesn't mean you are you know, you the best, you know, everything. So that's another thing I want to do. I want to make more soap because I want to get better at it. I want to learn all of these different things and these different techniques and why things happen the way they do. Um, and a lot of it just comes down to them happening to you when you're making soap and you learning like what happened, you know, you can research things, but experience is the best teacher. You can just see so many air bubbles in that green soap. I'm using that stick blender. I had titanium dioxide in there and I really wanted it to be mixed in well. And also I should say these are Nurture Green Vibrance and Nurture Orange Vibrance. Um, and the Green Vibrance is notorious for turning a weird kind of pea soup green in raw soap batter, but it changes back once the soap has cured um, to a, a pretty green, so it won't look like that <laughs> in the end. Um, so yeah, I guess I decided to go ahead and use the stick blender here to try and get that titanium dioxide mixed in there. I put a little bit of TD in, in all three of my, my splits. I think what happened was um, trying to whisk in the colorant was not it wasn't easy that's a lot of soap um and i just didn't feel like the color was getting mixed as well as i would have liked i didn't want speckles because that's a problem if you don't mix your colors in good you can have speckles of you know the mica unmixed mica in there which you know whatever it's all aesthetics it's nothing is you know it's not ruining your soap and some people, you know, may actually try to achieve that, the speckles, but I don't. I don't try to achieve those things. <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with it, it's just not part of my design plan. Oh, this is my workshop heritage mold that I just got this year. And um, they make beautiful products, but I'm pretty sure they make them to order, which is cool. But it does mean that if you are an impatient person like myself, you will be waiting a few weeks to get your product. It's it's not immediate. Um, so it was it was torture waiting on this to come in the mail. But I got it. And I'm using it. And it's great. And it's huge. And one of my issues that I'm having right here is that when I sized this soap recipe oh the ac just kicked on again i hope it i hope i'm right and you're not going to hear this but anyway when i was sizing this soap recipe i did it to the internal dimensions of my mold on soap calc and i didn't really think about the fact that i will need to move the soap mold around and i need to 
you know, tap it down to get air bubbles out. So when I put the interior dimensions in, I did exact dimensions and it gives me enough soap batter to exactly fill that mold all the way to the top. Um, so it's, there's no room for error here. If I bump the, the mold, you know, if I try to slam it down to get the air bubbles out, it's going to overflow my mold. The silicone mold is going to overflow into the, the wood mold. The wood mold still got a little bit of a lip on it. Um, and then also this table is uneven. So this top left corner is super full and trying to overflow. And then the top right corner, not as full. It's kind of annoying. So my soaps on that side are a little bit bigger than the soaps on the other side. I need a stable workspace, work counter. But for now, I'm on a card table. I also filling it this high, I can't do textured tops and still be able to insulate um, my soap mold, which you'll see how I insulated this because I'm cheap and I didn't want to spend the extra money on the lid that comes with this. So yeah, I used baking sheets to create a barrier so I could put the towel on it. <laughs> and it worked. And I've done at least one other soap batch um, and I did the same thing with the cookie sheets and the towel. So here is where I am going to start seriously struggling. 25 pounds of soap is so heavy. I mean, I am not weak. I can, I can lift things, but because of the dimensions of this and my soap recipe is also a softer recipe, it's not hard right out of the mold. Um, it obvious oftentimes I have to let my soap sit in the mold for a few days before I can even pull the silicone mold off of it because my soap will be soft enough that it will stick to the side of the mold a little bit. Um, so you can imagine that this is soft and now I'm it's heavy and I'm going to try and figure out how to get it out of this mold.
watching.